there's sometimes valid reasons for that. The goal of the probate is to take the assets, pay whatever debts there are, and then pass them along to whoever's going to get those assets. Um, sometimes there are contests, and I've had nightmare contests between siblings over dividing up nothing, mm -hmm. um, and that happens sometimes. Sometimes the real estate becomes an issue. Someone's living in the house, doesn't want to get out, they don't want to sell the house. The other ones, the other siblings want to sell the house or the other heirs. And um, resolving that through the court is sometimes a difficult process. The long and short of it is it really only takes as long as it takes to pass whatever is in the estate to the heirs. And people will also often get lawyers to contest these things. Is there ever a time when there's such a dispute that someone might actually call in mediators to do I've that? I've actually mediated yeah, uh, probate issues, um, and it's really not a whole lot different than mediating a family court issue. Mm -hmm. Well, if people are, what well, we talk about issues contentious at times, if that is a heated battle, then does that not undermine your potential for mediation, or well, is it, it something that you're able to uh, it's, ride rough? It, it's actually why it's a lot like mediating a family court issue, because sometimes it's about money, a lot of time it's about emotion and mm -hmm. things that have no value. So what we try to do is get to the core of what the issue is and get the people to try to maybe even stand in the shoes of the other person mm -hmm. and figure out why they want what they want. If you could discuss any of the, not specifically, but some of the trust that you've had to work out, how long does it actually take for someone to start to play that out? It sounds like it can be a very daunting... For a trust? A daunting it depends task. on what you own. I, mean, I know you talked about if you the own, inventory. If you own a lot of real estate, for instance, in order for a trust to be an effective trust, you have to take all of your assets and you have to transfer them into the trust. Right. Quite often people will come in my office and they'll say, well, I have a trust here and, and all it is is just an empty trust. It's just a will uh, and then there's a trust. If there's nothing in there, the trust it has no purpose. Right. Because You've got it's to going to probate. Yeah, so it's going to go to probate. Now, if someone says, here's the list of things that need to be in the trust, who actually takes care of that process and what is that process? Some lawyers do that. Um, some lawyers will sit um, with their paralegals and the people and make sure that everything's transferred in. Some lawyers will give their clients a list of this is what needs to be transferred, here's the documentation um, that you want to bring to the bank or to whoever needs to do it so that they know what name to put in. Uh, on the account or whatever? Well, for real estate, quite often we'll draft a deed it, transferring the yeah. property into the trust. If we do it, um, we make sure everything gets put in, otherwise and it's... And we record the deeds, and right. people will forget to record the deeds as well. It's ineffective otherwise. Yeah. Well, we've talked about some of the differences between wills and trusts. Are there times, and I've seen times, when uh, someone might put together a trust but also have a will also, and in what cases would they do that? Every case. Right, yeah. and what happens? Where's my jewelry going? Well, the, hmm. the the jewelry could be in the trust, but the point of the will is there is oftentimes an asset that gets missed, or something that comes up after the trust was created, and the will is usually called a pour-over will. So what it does is it says whatever I have that didn't get put in the trust, that belongs in the trust, it pours it over into the trust. The trust is the beneficiary of the will. Good to know. Mm -hmm. At the same time that you're taking care of. Um, do you also uh, suggest that that's the time that people will also determine who their power of attorney is at the, for the, their passing or whoever you're working well, with? Is it, there's a difference. All the mm -hmm. Power of attorney is a living document. So the power of attorney is someone who's going to handle your financial affairs in your absence or if you're declared incompetent. So the power of attorney should be somebody that you trust entirely. Mm -hmm. okay. And it may not be the same as who your executive it might be someone different it could be different but they have to be they have to be good with money um, trustworthy they, they're trustworthy yeah they have fiduciary obligations so when you pass away your power of attorney passes with right. you it's, it's no done. longer an active document so a lot of people come in and they say I want a will and what Jackie and I will say is well a real estate plan is a will it's a durable power of attorney for the financial affairs. It's a health care power of attorney. Policy. It's a living will. Mm -hmm. Those are all documents you should have. And the one actually that's probably the most important is the durable power of attorney because mm -hmm. you can avoid a guardianship if you have that document. And that is as likely to happen to some people. It, well, they're all going to die, but you may eventually need a guardian. And that's avoiding that is very probate. important. Elaborate on that in the short time that we have left. Um, 
one would want to have that. What a durable power of attorney does, it says that this person will take care of all my financial affairs if I'm unable to. And if you don't have that document, then the only way to get that done is to go to probate court and have someone appointed as your guardian to do that for you. And then they have to file accounting, yeah. so you have a probate court that's yeah. overseeing it. That, once a year, you're supposed to file an accounting. That's a much more yeah. onerous process it than is. probating a will. Yeah. And do you end up taking care of that process? If you start with someone, do you end up reviewing that yearly or... Are you likely to initiate that? A, a guardianship? No, well, guardianship has to be reviewed yearly. And Not the court will send you right. a notice. So the onus that then remains on the lawyer? On the guardian. On, on, on the guardian, guardian itself. Yeah. Okay. On the guardian. And then they would come back to you and review that? Yeah, I, I've had that happen where um, probate court is trying to contact a guardian to file uh, an accounting. They don't hear from them. Yeah. They look at the attorney of record and I'll get a letter from right. probate court. And we've had issues with guardians where they're not doing things correctly and if they removed. won't follow us and listen, they, they should be removed. Mm -hmm. And if they won't follow our advice, we'll be removed because we'll resign. Mm -hmm. And I guess one last piece of this that I'd like to have you touch on briefly. You're lawyers, you're not uh, tax attorneys. When you're dealing with uh, an estate that might be sizable and might have a taxable, hefty tax volume, do you often call in or suggest that someone comes in to handle that aspect specifically? I yeah. tell them. Do you uh, take that initiative? Yeah there, yeah, there are two steps. First is talk to your accountant before you start transferring assets because there may be mm -hmm. tax consequences. The second is then we'll do your estate plan. You're not responsible for that portion of it and you tell them that. Well, we're responsible to tell them that there could be a tax ramification. We often do our estate plan with accountants, um, yeah. the person's account as part of the um, input process of where things should be and how they want it done. Um, and there are lawyers who specialize in estate planning and do nothing but and probably know the uh, tax consequences of death as well as some accountants. And they change so frequently they the do. tax. Chris, ask us laws. right now what the federal tax yeah. um, maximum is for uh, estate tax and it's unlimited right now until January when they change yeah. it and make it retroactive. Uh, you can die in 2010. Right now, George pain. Steinbrenner picked a good year to yeah, die. That's correct. We'll find out in January if yeah. he was correct. And that's when the new taxes were? Well, they, I do not see that the um, U.S. Uh, Congress is not going to change that retroactively. Mm -hmm. Do you suggest that people first see the, the attorney? I want to make sure that people are clear. Do you expect that people, or suggest that people first see an, an, a tax accountant before they see you to settle that if it's a simple estate you're talking about after the death now no i'm talking about someone who's setting up a trust setting it up do they need to see an accountant before they see a lawyer an accountant or a lawyer who specializes mm -hmm. good to know um any other last minute issues that we, we need to cover covered at all well i mean the only other thing is the health care power of attorney That's which important. is a form and you would like people to know that they can usually go online and find forms well rhode island has a form and it's appointing who you want to make those health care decisions for you and would it matter jackie you, you would take care of massachusetts as well as rhode island are there any differences between yeah, you rhode call island? it a health care proxy your small estate is up to is twenty five thousand or mass. less in rhode island it's, it's 15. 15. Yeah. I think that um, we might be asking, as we usually do, some of our studio audience, and we ask people who are interested in sending us some questions. We can usually address them in the following segments. And I think that we haven't decided what our next topic is going to be. We have a few topics, but we always ask that you send by email or perhaps um, may have a few questions that you'd like to share with us. We'd be happy to have our lawyers. What is that email address? What is that? It's Full Channel TV, Legal Matters at FullChannelTV.net. Right. Um, as we're ready to say goodbye, we'd like to thank all of you for watching, and we ask you to stay tuned as the discussion of legal matters continues.